tell you something else? Can I tell you something else? I had an abortion two years ago and I don't regret it at all. They yanked the fetus out of my uterus. They yanked the fetus out of my uterus and I'm so happy. Okay. I'm so grateful. Okay. And I'm a professor at this university. Okay. And I make more money than you. Okay. And what else? How did we go from recognizing a mother's role in giving and nurturing life as a society to tolerating and even celebrating would-be mothers killing their babies? I want to tell you, it's not by accident. There is a demonic worldview underneath all of the pro-choice arguments that has been pushed to us through education, through media, through culture, and it gets much worse than this. So in this video, we're going to watch Pastor Vody Bokum expose this demonic worldview, contrast it with a biblical worldview, and then at the end, I'm going to add an urgent message from the scriptures. So let's dive in. If we ask this postmodern secular humanism this question, or these four questions, here are the answers we get. Who am I? The answer, you are nothing. You are an accident. You are a mistake. You are a glorified ape, that's all you are. You are the result of random evolutionary processes. That is it. No rhyme, no reason, no purpose. That is all you are. Why am I here? You are here to consume and enjoy. Get all you can, can all you get, sit on the can. That's why you're here. It's the only thing that matters. I remember when they asked the question of Lee Iacocca, when Chrysler was at its apex and he was making money hand over fist, how much money would be enough? He was as honest as any man has ever been. His answer, a little bit more. Always a little bit more. Consume and enjoy. That's why you're here. By the way, when you put these two things together, you get terrible results. If I have no rhyme or reason for my existence, if I am no more than the result of random evolutionary processes, and I only exist to consume and enjoy, the only thing that matters is if I'm more powerful than you. And if you have something I need for my enjoyment. Because if you have something I need for my enjoyment, and I am more powerful than you are, and there is no rhyme or reason to your existence, then it is incumbent upon me to take from you what I need for my own satisfaction. Have we not seen this? Have we not seen this lived out in the world? Have we not seen the logical conclusion of this kind of social Darwinism? Have we not seen a culture that at one time said, there is one race that is further evolved than all other races. And because the Aryan race is further evolved than all other races, it is incumbent upon the Aryan race to dominate and or exterminate other races in order to usher in the next level of our evolution. But don't look down on them. Don't look down on their scientists and their biologists who looked upon Jews as things and not people in order to justify their extermination because that's exactly what our scientists and biologists do to the baby in the womb. The same concept of eugenics, the same concept of all that is is an inconvenient lump of flesh. Or even more sinister, this child will be severely deformed and will therefore hinder your ability to consume and enjoy. Or worse, you are old and feeble the end is near. You not only have a right to die, but you have a duty to die. We can give you this cocktail and your children won't have to take care of you anymore. A 
Who am I? According to secular humanism, I'm nothing. Why am I here? To make the most of it. To consume and enjoy while I can. There's a lie that a lot of people believe. A lot of people believe that education is neutral. That it just gives objective facts and there is no indoctrination taking place. And the reality is, either an education is based on the fundamental belief that God is our creator and we get our value from him and we find knowledge from him or it's built on the belief that there is no God and we've seen generation after generation after generation of kids in schools being taught from a foundation that says there is no God the Bible isn't history the Bible is not fact the Bible is just belief it's just fiction and this is what is true and so the result is generations that have been primed to adopt secular atheistic ideas for example abortion that life is not valuable and worth preserving from the womb but it doesn't just stop there that's also why so many people including many christians who have been raised and educated in these godless institutions are struggling over issues about sexuality believing the bible and these types of things and this is why every christian parent must strongly consider making sure their children has an education built on the foundations of God and God's word and God's truth and not relying on these secular atheistic government institutions to raise our children because <laughs> you can't send your children to go and be educated by Caesar and be surprised when they turn out like Romans. But look, cool. That's what secular humanism says. Let's see what Christian theism says. Christian theism says I'm the crowning glory of the creation of God. Christian theism says, he knit me together in my mother's womb. Christian theism says, I am no accident. I am no result of random processes. Christian theism says, whether I am tall and beautiful, or whether I am small and not so handsome, whether my body functions perfectly, or I am deformed severely, I am the crowning glory of the creation of God. And as a result, I have inherent dignity and inherent worth and inherent value. Christian theism cannot comprehend ideas like racism and classism and eugenics. Christian theism looks at the black man and the not so black man. You categorize the world how you want to, I categorize the world how I want to. <laughs> but it's okay that you're not black like me. God loves you just like you are. So we see Christian theism says, you have value. There is a God, he made you, you have dignity from before you were even born you had dignity. But there are people who will then say, actually the issue of abortion is not just about the issue of life, it's, about, it's also about the issue of women's rights. Shouldn't women have the right to choose what they do with their body? And how about in cases of rape? Should a woman be forced to bring a child into the world when she, when she was coerced into sex? And the problem, the problem with this thinking, the first problem is that you, you have the right to make choices of your body. But firstly, your body was given to you by God. So you have responsibilities to honor him with your body. But secondly, abortion isn't just about, in fact, abortion is not about your body primarily. Abortion is about you terminating another life, another body, another baby, another soul with its own DNA, its own genetic code, a genetic code that will never be recreated. And so who gives us the right to end the life of another innocent person, even if that life came into the world because of somebody else's crime, because of somebody else's sin. Why should the baby pay for the sins of the rapist? When somebody brings up the issue of rape, we first need to establish the facts. The vast majority of abortions take place where there is no rape involved. So if we can agree that in all those instances where there's no rape involved, abortion is wrong, then we can talk about the rare occasions where rape takes place. If not, 
then th what that person is doing is weaponizing other people's abuse to prove their own point, to make their own case, which is wrong. And this matters. This matters a lot. This matters a lot because if the baby in the womb is a life, is a baby, is a human, then someone who ends that life has committed murder. And God tells us in his word that the price of a life is a life. So there are millions and millions of people who are guilty of murder. And even though our society doesn't say so, that's the reality. And if we stand, and we might get away with it in our culture, but if we stand before a holy God, he's going to see all of these times. He's going to see every single life that was shed. And if he was to judge us, he would rightfully condemn us, condemn anyone who's committed this, anyone who's encouraged this to eternity away from him. And so the only way that we can be forgiven of this, the only way that your slate can be washed clean, if you have in any way supported abortion, is through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for your sins. So there is, of course, a way to be forgiven, but we must not take God's grace for granted and we must not by the lie that our culture tells us so that we can consume and enjoy, forgetting that it profits a man nothing to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Now, this isn't the only area in which our culture is allowing a demonic worldview to take over. So if you want to see another video dealing with other cultural issues, then click here. Hope this video has blessed you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace and blessings.